The city's been quiet lately. Maybe my luck's finally changing. Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, welcome back to my video game review series. So, I recently reviewed Spider-Man the movie license game from 2002. Today we're going to be looking at the sequel, Spider-Man 2, released in 2004, developed by Treyarch. So this was the first Spider-Man game to be made in an open world format. The game is a third person open world action adventure game where you basically swing through the city, rescuing civilians, beating up gangs and criminals, the game is a little light on story, but it definitely has one. It very loosely follows the story of the Spider-Man 2 movie. Just like in the movie, Dr. Otto Octavius is attempting to make a breakthrough in energy production, and this leads to him ending up in an accident, which turns him into the villainous Dr. Octopus. In addition to the main plot, you have various other villains from the Spider-Man comics, added for the sake of content, more on those later. In the beginning of the game, you once again get a tutorial that, just like the first game, is narrated by Bruce Campbell. Well, sequel time already, huh? Welcome back, I guess. I'm sure you miss me more than I miss you. So the next thing I want you to do is jump off the building. I mean it, just jump. Hey, I wouldn't tell you to do something dangerous and life-threatening, would I? Come on! The developers must have realised that Bruce made a big impact with fans, and really added a huge amount of charm and charisma to the game. So they brought him back and gave him so much more to do here. In addition to the tutorial, you have numerous hint markers scattered throughout the city that you can activate, which are once again narrated by Bruce. You'll do a dodge move as long as you aren't a total spaz. It's fun to try and find as many of these as possible to hear all his hints and witty remarks. You know there's over 200 hint markers scattered around the city. Once the tutorial is over, you begin the first chapter. You complete chapters by simply completing challenges in your to-do list, and obtaining hero points. You can obtain hero points by performing various tasks and services around the city. As you explore the city, various NPCs and pedestrians on the street will shout for your help, and Spider will have the option to either ignore them, or talk to them and find out what they want. They will have a random task for you, such as defeating thugs and criminals, this could be halting a robbery, stopping a runaway vehicle, or just getting ambushed in the street. The combat of the game is absolutely fantastic, with Spidey being able to punch and kick enemies, as well as using various web attacks to incapacitate enemies. Spidey feels significantly more powerful than these standard enemies, and it's really cool and fun to try out all the different combat strategies. You also have NPCs that are in danger, and you have to save them, such as a sinking boat full of tourists, construction workers who are about to fall off rooftops, injured NPCs who urgently need a lift to the hospital, or perhaps most importantly, a child who has lost their balloon. Try to hang on to it. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Seriously, you could be right in the middle of a gang fight or saving somebody's life only to hear a child crying about their balloon flying away, and of course, that takes priority over everything else that you're doing. One of the most random occurrences that you'll come across in the game is purse snatchers. Thank goodness! This looks like yours. I can't believe you helped me! Find a safer line of work. Here you are. No charge for delivery. Seriously, I ran into so many of these purse snatchers playing through the game. Whether I was on a mission, whether I was performing another random occurrence, or helping a civilian, there would always be someone trying to rob a lady's purse in this game. I mean, how many purse snatchers are there in New York City? I mean, that's insane. The game does its best to help you simulate what Spidey has to go through in the movie. You could be on your way to a mission or an objective, 
only to have to stop midway to save somebody's life. I really love the way this makes you feel like a true hero and helps to immerse you into the character of Spidey. As far as the main plot goes, you have some authenticity with Tobey Maguire, Alfred Molina and Kirsten Dunst, all reprising their roles from the movie. You have several subplots that were added in addition to the main plot from the movie, such as a subplot involving Black Cat, as she is constantly showing up in suspicious locations, and Spidey will have to chase her down to find her true intentions. Wait, what's your name? Me? I'm Black Cat, and I just crossed your path. Now, if you'll excuse me. She is seductive, witty, and does her best to have fun with Spidey and convince him to help her out. You get to team up with her on several occasions for several missions, and you get a whole subplot that was quite fun. You also have several boss battles, including probably the greatest boss battle in the history of gaming. You dare to challenge the infinite line of Mysterio? I will destroy you utterly. You will bear witness to the majesty and glory of my power. In all seriousness though, the boss battles in the game are a bit of a letdown. They are easy enough to do once you figure out how, but they just feel a bit glitchy and awkward. There is lots of ragdolling, unresponsive countering, and the boss battles are just pretty lame. It's a shame because most of the boss battles in the first game were actually really good, and most of this game is an absolute blast to play, but the boss battles by comparison to the first game just suck. You fight the likes of Doc Ock multiple times, Rhino, the Shocker returning from the last game, who you actually fight twice, and Mysterio. The Mysterio villain subplot is probably the most drawn out of all of them, you have several varied levels, involving him, including one where you have to go to Liberty Island, which has seemingly been taken over by aliens, <laughs> and the Statue of Liberty has been replaced by like a giant statue of Mysterio, and you have to restore it back to normal, and you have to fight a bunch of robot minions. There's even a pretty cool level where you go into sort of a creepy uh, clown funhouse that's been set up by Mysterio, and Spider-Man's just like, wait, hang on a second, I thought this, thought he was meant to be an alien. So yeah, <laughs> the Mysterio subplot in the game is really funny, I really enjoyed it, and like I said, it culminates in probably the greatest boss battle ever. The game also has a few problems in regards to its overall polish. The game looks okay for 2004, and the graphics and presentation are okay when you consider its short development cycle, and the fact that the game is open world but it definitely doesn't look quite as good as the first game, but like I said before, it's open world, so I would expect that. But one of the issues I noticed about the game, in retrospect, is that so many of the side activities and challenges are flat out broken, and a lot of them are unresponsive. In fact, I have never actually met a single person who has 100% completed this game before. If you know anybody who has, please let me know in the comment section, but I personally haven't met anybody who has. And from a little bit of research that I've done online, I can't seem to find anything about this game being completed 100%, making me wonder as to whether or not it's even possible. You have a lot of collectibles to find, such as skyscraper tokens, skyscraper token set. Wonder where you find those, huh? Secret tokens, hideout tokens, and boys, which you basically have to jump onto them to collect them all. If you like hunting for collectibles, these can be fun to find. But there's not really a huge incentive to do so. The game has a pretty good leveling up system. As you complete chapters, new upgrades will become available to purchase, such as swing speed upgrades, combat moves, and various tricks that you can do by using your hero points. One way to earn hero points as quickly as possible is to do various side activities, such as photo missions for Robbie at the Daily Bugle or my personal favourite, delivering pizzas for Mr. Aziz. Seriously, delivering pizzas is a blast. I remember doing this for hours as a kid. The game also has some pretty cool references as well as callbacks to the first game, such as if you go to the building where you defeated Vulture in the first game, you can actually see Vulture's feathers sitting on the building, or even references to certain features in the first game. Get good at it and you'll be knocking thugs over like bowling pins. Hey, bowling, there's an idea. 
So overall, this game is a bit of a mixed bag. It has great combat, great controls and gameplay mechanics, and it's about as close as you can get to an authentic Spider-Man experience, making you feel like a true hero. But unfortunately, the game has quite a few more problems than I remember it having, and it feels as if parts of the game are just flat out missing. It lacks the features and the replay value from the first game, and if I'm being honest, the game at times just feels unrefined and unpolished clearly having a rushed development cycle. The disappointing boss battles and the missing content keeps the game from being a perfect 10 out of 10, but the game is great nonetheless and I would definitely recommend it to any Spidey fan. One interesting feature that the game does have is if you go into the pause menu, you'll notice that there's a trailer for X-Men Legends, which actually came out later that same year. By the way, I am going to review that game at some point, so stay tuned for that. I give this game a solid 8 out of 10 in retrospect, which I personally think is a fair score. Thanks for watching guys, I had an absolute blast replaying Spider-Man 2. Stay tuned for my next review where I'm going to be reviewing the sequel, Spider-Man 3. I'm really looking forward to making that video. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching and God bless. Spider-Man.